Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. Before heading out to my morning run, before getting into this video, just want to give a big thank you and shout out to the sponsor of this video, Raycon Earbuds. I've been using Raycon Earbuds for many years now. Still my favorite pair of earbuds. I love how long they last. These are the everyday earbuds. They get eight hours of playtime. I love how they're sweat and water resistant because I'm always wearing these when I'm out running or working out. Most of all, I love how comfortably they fit in my ear. I mentioned this before, I have really weirdly shaped ears, so earbuds often fall out. These, I run, I bike, haven't fallen out once. Not only have they never fallen out, they're super, super comfortable. These are probably the only pair of earbuds I've ever owned that has never fallen out of my ear. I love how compact the case is. Blue's my favorite color, always get blue. I also love that Raycon is on a mission to prove that you really shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg for quality sound and essential smart tech listening features like noise isolation or awareness mode or be able to have a crystal clear conversation while wearing these. So thanks to Raycon, you're basically paying half the price for the same if not better quality earbuds and because they're half the price of other premium earbuds i got two of these one i carry around with me the other i put in my gym bag because i'm probably the most absent-minded person in the world and with the two pairs i still pay less also raycon has free domestic shipping where if you're buying internationally there's a flat rate you can also try them out make sure you like them because they have a easy and free return policy try it out for 45 days if you don't like it for any reason get your money back so if you want to get a pair go to my link down below or just go to buyraycon.com slash mikey chan you'll get 15 percent off so if you are looking for a new pair of earbuds, I highly recommend checking these out. All right, going for my run and enjoy the video. Oh my God, this line has grown all for Fuji Rami. Oh my God, this line has grown all for Fuji Rami. This is one of the yeah. most popular bowls of skimming you can find in Tokyo. I'm lucky to get in right away. So the powder on top is bonito powder. Combine the broth together. Bonito goes in. Swish it around. First of all, the noodles are so perfectly chewy. The flavor of the dipping broth, it's just like a thick, rich umami of this. Mm. There's pork in here, there's nori, there's bamboo. And I always will recommend getting skimming if you're ever in Tokyo. I mean, I like a traditional bowl of ramen, but skimming is just so much better in terms of texture. So they put the chashu right into this dipping broth right here. So tender. The egg just adds to the richness of the broth. Add a little pepper if you want, and the thick broth just cleans on. Mm. Also, I love that snappiness from the bamboo. When you're done, soup stock. What's really unique about this place is, first of all, the chashu is chopped up, mixed in with the dipping sauce. The sauce is rich, it's thick, it's deep. The umami flavor from the bonito, it's just exploding in there. The noodles though, that is the star. This might be the best noodle texture I've ever had. It was so amazingly chewy. The texture of those noodles is gonna be haunting me for the rest of my days. That is such an amazing, amazing, ramen place and don't forget about the soup at the end add that to the dipping broth and drink up every last drop of that umami filled soup yeah, the citron place right there that looks good so apparently the citron restaurant is pretty popular in tokyo just opened up and it's almost full and i got a mapo tofu and knife cut noodles everything is handmade here because i got that i get three free dumplings which you go up to the counter and you serve yourself
I think dumplings just okay. They kind of taste like veggie dumplings, but I see meat in here, so not a lot of flavor in the meat. Soup is good though. Oh my goodness. I've never seen mapa tofu like this before. They cooked this mapa tofu in a sizzling stone pot and they told me it's a solid piece of tofu in here. So you gotta mix it up. Look at the chilies and spices in this thing. And it's soaking tofu. So what they're saying to just mix it well. Here with it, knife cut noodles. Take some of the tofu. Put it on my noodles. What I should have done, instead of putting the mapa tofu in my noodles, put the noodles into my mapa tofu. This is some next level mapo tofu. This tofu itself is so soft. Yeah, everything is made in house here. Add the mapo tofu in there, mix it up, and instantaneously these noodles are completely transformed. Especially, I'm telling you, dip it back into that mapo tofu a little bit. If you guys never had knife cut noodles before, you gotta try it. Traditionally, the cook has the giant dough on his head and just shaving it into the broth. So the noodles comes out really coarse, some thick, some thin, but the texture is so chewy and nice, and these noodles are perfect. Also, mapa tofu, you gotta eat it with some rice, so they got rice up there for you as well. I love this restaurant. This is an awesome place to go. Plenty of meat, it's spicy, it's so nummy, it's so fragrant. My tongue is already turning numb from the peppercorn and the chilies. And the mapa tofu is just sizzling hot the entire time you're eating it because it's in that stone bowl. Tofu is ridiculously soft. The fermented bean they use in this, delicious. So you get all that great earthiness from this dish as well. I know this is not a secret for locals, but what a find for me. Also, got some hot oil wontons. This is way better than the dumplings. Chive and pork wontons. Mm. The sauce is good. It's spicy, it's nummy. The skin of the wontons is soft. 100% come here, try out the sizzling mapa tofu. I didn't make one mistake. I got the noodle with the mapa tofu. I see rice sitting up there, so I just went and got some rice. The rice is extra. I 100% recommend the noodles though. Just got a bag of goodies from Truffle Bread. A lot of people have been talking about this bakery online. And I got their number one and number two items. We gotta try the hot one right away. This is their croque monsieur, and it's made with truffles. First of all, it's packaged beautifully. If you never had a croque monsieur, it's a hot sandwich made with ham and cheese, and they put fresh shaved black truffle on top. They give you a lot of shaved truffles on top. And I'm just gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Not wasting a single slice of this. This sandwich is covered in cheese and then this cheese is toasted by a torch. So it's beautifully charred on top. It's a very thick sandwich and the smell of it is just unreal. Mm. Inside gooey cheese. Toast is absolutely perfect. Super crusty and buttery on the outside. Inside so soft and pillowy. Get that delightful crunch from the crust. Some toasty cheese and inside just a nest of pure gooey creamy cheese. Mm. 
Oh, and there's pieces of ham in here as well, right under the cheese, deliciously smoky. That croak definitely lived up to all the hype. Wow. I've had many a croak in my day, never like that. And if I ate that and croaked right after, that'd be a really fitting last meal. Also, I got their second best seller. This is their truffle butter bun. It's covered in a thin layer of sugar. I love this bakery. It's so airy. It's sweet, it's earthy, the bread is nice and chewy. And as you chew, the wonderful flavor of the truffle just accentuates. Mm. If you're ever in Tokyo, and if you love truffle or you love croak, come here and get those two things I just had. You're gonna make your day a lot better. Also, I just wanna say that croak at today's conversion is about $7. $7 for a freshly shaved truffle. Delicious, out of this world croak. That's such a good deal. Right now, I am at Kisaburo Farm. Japanese eggs are some of the highest quality in the world. And the all-you-can-eat egg buffet is only 1,000 yen. So at today's conversion, about 750 US dollars. Actually, there's two offerings. One is all-you-can-eat eggs for 1,000 yen, or all-you-can-eat eggs and rice. And each of them comes with all these toppings on the bottom, like dry white bait, nori, seaweed, spicy cod roll. Not exactly sure how this works yet, but... I just start ordering. The egg buffet is a raw egg buffet. There's six different types of eggs sitting at a table, right, as you walk in the door. And they're gonna bring you rice, and you get to choose one ingredient. So I got mint Thai Co. They're gonna bring a meal set to me. I'm just gonna have my ingredient, rice, and then basically just crack these over the rice and pretty much just eat as many eggs as I can. So there's six different types of eggs. This one's the yuzu tama egg, and they call it that because the chicken were fed yuzu. This one is the mandarin orange egg. I think because of the color, this is the red egg. And most people in the review said this is the best tasting egg. This is the rice egg. I'm assuming it's because the chicken were fed rice. This smaller, whiter, slightly bluish one is the aracana egg. And finally, the last one, this is the wine egg. Maybe the chicken were drunk when they laid this? I'm not sure. And the one I mixed in is the red egg. I think that's the most popular one. That just might be the richest egg I think I've ever had. So this is egg number nine. The first six, I just mixed everything together with the rice. And I see people just kind of drinking it, slurping it. That's pretty much what I did. Now I'm just trying to taste all the eggs individually. Mm. This is night and day compared to the eggs I had before. Local farm fresh Japanese eggs. It's one of the richest eggs I have ever eaten. The, the one I just had, the wine egg, is probably the richest egg I have ever put in my mouth. I feel like I need a little bit of spice, add a bit of acid to this thing. That's so rich and yummy. Mm. This one is the mandarin orange. The color is so beautifully bright. It's like staring into a gorgeous sunset. Just add a tiny bit of soy sauce. Mmm. Oh, wow. The one before that was just incredibly, incredibly rich. Almost like the Wagyu steak of eggs. This one, much lighter, and the texture is silky smooth. I've always loved Japanese eggs, but I never ate it like this before because the eggs are usually inside ramen or on top of a dome. I never ate it where the eggs are the main ingredients. There's so much difference in nuances in their texture and flavor. I want to keep eating, but 
Um, we got here about 30 minutes before this place closed, so they're closing right now. Really wish I was able to taste that white yolk one on its own. But for 1,600 yen, this is such a great deal and an incredibly unique experience. The next day. Good morning, it's the next day. I'm back once again at the All You Can Eat Egg Buffet. Today, I just wanted to eat something simple and healthy. So usually when I'm traveling, I'll have a day where I'm eating a lot, and the next day I try to cut down, work out more, eat stuff that's high in protein. So, back again for eggs. I think if I lived in Japan, I'd be coming to this place a lot. Really healthy food, like I said, high in protein, all for about 11 US dollars. Such a great deal. And since the last time, what I like to do with these eggs is that, I'll show you guys this really cool way to eat eggs. So what you do is, take your bowl, take your egg. I think this is a wine egg. Set the yolk aside for now and just mix the egg whites very vigorously. Actually, this big bowl might be better. Take out some rice, add the egg whites to the rice, and make sure when you're doing this, the rice is piping hot. Now, mix this together, not as vigorously. And when you do this, the heat from the rice is gonna react with the egg yolks that's already mixed, and it's gonna make something super foamy and cloud-like. Super foamy, cloud-like egg whites mixed with the rice. And then add some salt to kind of bring out the sweetness of the eggs. Finally, take the yolk, pop it on. And then pop the egg. Let that goldenness flow. Mm. Oh, such a good way to eat your eggs. The egg whites and the rice, so fluffy and light. The yolk, amazingly creamy. Also, because there's so many air bubbles in here, it also has sort of a frothy texture as well. Have some mint cola again. Mm. That's so good. And if you want some umami, add some soy sauce as well. Mm. That is so delicious. In terms of egg safety, raw eggs are consumed in very high quantities every single day in Japan. And the reason why it's so much safer to consume raw eggs in Japan is first of all, the way they raise their chickens is in a much cleaner environment. Also, they have what's known as like a super egg machine that washes the eggs. Also, they can see inside the eggs to look for any impurities, to spot basically anything that could be potentially wrong with eating that particular raw egg. It's not 100% foolproof, but in general, raw eggs are pretty much safe to eat in Japan. And the eggs that can be eaten raw is indicated by a particular here. So if you go into a local Japanese grocery store, just buy some eggs, you'll be able to tell which ones you can eat raw, which ones you can't. This next egg is gonna be really interesting. This is the one that Ray really ran out of the last time I was here. This is the rice egg and it has a white yolk. Just made a bowl with four eggs in here. In the middle one, the rice egg. I've never seen this, like a pure white colored egg yolk. That is so fascinating. Mm. The flavor is a lot less rich, a lot more mild than other eggs. Eggs in Japan, truly the best. Dinner time. I don't know what it is about Sunday evenings. It's so quiet around Tokyo. 
This place looks good. Oh, it's so crowded. Since it's such a chilly night out, I'm here at an Odin restaurant. Odin, if you don't know, different foods cooked in dashi and outside of a 7-Eleven, I don't think I've ever had it before. Fish cake with wasabi. Mmm. It's cold fish cake, jammed with hot, full of flavor. That was one of the most flavorful fish cakes I've ever had. I never had white wasabi before, but that wasabi is delicious. A little creamy, too. For the Odin, number one thing to get, I always hear, is this giant daikon. I never had Odin outside of what I had at a 7 Eleven, so this is a really interesting experience for me. Mmm. So good. There's definitely a some 7-Eleven all day. Wow. The dashi, it's definitely steeped all the way through this giant daikon. Every bite, you get that sweet juice from the daikon. Also that umami flavor from the dashi. Mm. A little mustard. That's delicious as well. This is um, beef tendon. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, so tender, so tender, so tender. Wow, this stew is so well. Good combination of lean and fatty meats. Dip a little bit of spicy mustard. Mm. Fish tofu. I'm definitely gonna need another one of these beef sticks. Deep fried tofu, delicious outer shell, super tender inside. Mm. And this is a tube fish cake. Again, okay, I've had all this at the local 7-Eleven. As much as I love 7-Eleven, the flavor don't even come close to this. And this is typically something people eat while drinking. It's basically a hot pot. So it's really good for a chilly night like this. There's some tamago. Ooh, a really soft fish cake. Mmm. It's called a hanpan. It's a soft Japanese fish cake. It tastes like a marshmallow. The texture, almost exactly. As soon as it goes in your mouth, completely dissolves. I mean, that thing dissolved in like two seconds in my mouth. And that's a fish cake. So you got all that umaminess of a fish cake with the texture of a marshmallow. How crazy is that? Japanese scallops. Mm. <laughs> Super sweet scallops. Stewed in that delicious dashi. Add a little bit of mustard to it. Yeah, I love the fact that they don't always just come at once. So whenever a new dish comes, it's coming piping hot. And my taco sumeri just arrived, and this is fish octopus ball with bonito flakes on top. Whoa. Wow, that is soft. These are super tender little fish slash octopus balls. Like just barely held together with some additional bonito flakes. Mm which gives it so much extra umami. Ooh, I think that the highlight of the evening just showed up. This is a kenchaku. Kenchaku is a, is a pouch used to carry small items. Here, look at this. A fried tofu, and inside there's leeks and there's tuna. How cool is this? Oh, this is so good. This is my favorite one. It's like a fried tofu dumpling. Mm. Tuna inside is just so, so soft. Look at this. Oh. So soft, but that tuna flavor is so profound. Tofu pouch is really, really thin. Stuffed full of scallions and leeks. The dashi is delicious. Everything about this to make your stomach feel good and your heart to feel warm. Best thing here, 100%. This is such a fun experience. And they have uh, this giant pot dashi where they cook all the ingredients. It'd be really fun next time to kind of sit at the bar and like just sit right in front of this giant pot of all sorts of yumminess. Again, can't believe I've never went to an Elden restaurant before. That's on me. This is delicious, especially when it's cold outside. Get yourself some of this. And as always, guys, all the places I went to listed down below for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.